We now are in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verse 7 and 12, to 12. So we continue reading the narration of the life of Jesus through the Gospel of Mark. Now, there's a symbol that I would like to draw from today's Gospel. It is uh, based on this line. Jesus told his disciple to have a boat ready. A boat ready for him because of the crowd so that they will not crush him. <laughs> now, the gospel today goes in details to describe the, the large number of people that were coming from everywhere. You know, some of these towns are even about a hundred miles away from where Jesus Christ is. Uh, was located. So people from a hundred mile radius were coming towards him. It's a large number of people. To the point that scripture is specific to say that it, they were threatening to crush Jesus. It's a lot of people. And on top of that, scripture also says that those who were sick will press on him to touch him so that they will be healed. So crowds, large crowds, threatening to crush Jesus. Sick people with disease and trying to touch him. I don't know about you, but by now I am feeling a little anxious. <laughs> Where's my personal space? Give me, give me some space. Let me breathe. Um, and let's not forget, yes, Jesus is fully divine, but he's fully human. Uh, so... There is something of a need, of a human need, to have space, uh, a personal space, personal boundaries, uh, to not be crushed by the crowds. You know, I put myself in the shoes of Jesus, and you know, wow, you know, imagine people with leprosy, people with <coughs> sick, people that you see that have, oh, you know, just this figure perhaps, or you know trying to touch you and then press it on you. Now, <coughs> this is the times of Jesus. This is not perfume, cologne, deodorant, shower every day. No, this is, this is a stinky crowd. This is sweaty crowd. <coughs> no air conditioner, no, you know, sticky, stinky, sick, crowd pressing upon you. So, Jesus, in a very practical way, for his own care, to protect himself from the large crowd, <coughs> asked the disciples, have a boat ready for me. So, in a practical way, you know, a boat serves as a way to protect him, so he gets on the boat, he put on a little bit into the shore, you know, into the water, so now there's a distance. Unless people get in the water, but then you just go a little bit deeper. People can't get that, you know, close to him. Also forms a little amphitheater form, you know, because you have the hills coming down into the shores. People can sit in the hills. And now Jesus in the boat, when he projects his voice through the water, he carries out without obstacles. So you now we have a, an amphitheater, like, you know, so... He's able to teach, but from a distance, you know, so that he's not crushed. Uh, and we see many instances where the boat was helpful for Jesus. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, we see this boat as a pulpit, you know. In Mark 4, verse 35 to 36, he uses the boat to escape from a mob. Mark 4, chapter 30, uh, 4 cha verse 37 to 38, we see that Jesus goes into a boat to rest. And then rest even in the middle of a storm. Remember the storm and, and the apostles wakes him up, you know, do you not care that we're drowning? He's sleeping in a boat in the middle of a storm. So I would like to propose that image of a boat. And by the way, this Sunday I'll be preaching specifically about this symbol about the boat. And I want to tie it with the harmony from yesterday, you know, about anger. You know, allowing ourselves to process the anger. So, a boat in a physical sense, but a boat 
in the spiritual realm. And somehow, it's a good practice. It's one that I have been practicing for many years. And that we all need a physical space in your house that becomes kind of like that boat. In the Schoenstatt spirituality, we call it a home shrine. Um, but that place in your house where when you wake up early in the morning, you do your prayers, that area, that space, could be considered your boat. Every morning you wake up, you, I hope you do this, grab your cup of coffee, and you get into the boat. You, you enter the spiritual realm, and, and this boat takes you to deep waters, the realms of the spirit. And when you get in those waters, you, you take time to process your emotions. And the emotions will be like those waves that comes when you're in the boat. So yesterday I spoke about anger. Well, that's a big wave. But you stay in the boat. You just don't jump into the water and drown in anger and let anger take over. No, you, just, you find a safe place where you could process your emotions. Following with the homily yesterday, so we could process your anger so that you can talk to the Father about your anger. That you can put words to your emotion. You can vent that anger, but from a safe place, the boat. So, now for me, my home shrine, my boat, I have the image of Jesus and the Blessed Mother. The mother and child, that's my favorite image because it reminds me that to be in this boat is like to be in the arms of a mother. Safe, protected, nourished, cared, loved, a beloved child. Like a child who is breastfed, a child who is carried, a child who is loved. So I enter the boat and allow myself to be who I am, a child in the arms. I'm able to be in the arms of the Father only in Christ Jesus. It's in Christ that I'm a beloved child of the Father, loved in maternal ways with Mary, and guided by the Spirit. So in this boat, I don't have a sail. I don't have pedals or paddles or a motor. I just enter as an act of complete trust and surrender and allow the Father and the Spirit to take me where He wishes. Sometimes the deep waters, sometimes they're very shaky, a lot of storms of emotions and things that I have to process. Sometimes it's ideas and projects and anxieties and concerns, and, but staying in the boat. So I don't know if you have a boat but I would highly encourage it. A place at your home where it's your holy place, a place where you close your eyes and allow yourself to be in the arms of Mary, to allow yourself to be in Christ, the beloved child of the Father. A place where you process thoughts, emotions, the past, the present, the future. A place where I know I'm loved, and a place where I find guidance in the Spirit, allowing the boat to take me wherever God desires. Now, it's important that you go there every day, at least 10 minutes. You must. Otherwise, the large number of people coming from everywhere, all your thoughts, ideas, all your anxieties, all your preoccupations, all your responsibilities, all your diseases, all your imperfections will begin to crush in on you. And that's not a healthy way of living. So I hope you have a home shrine, a boat. If not, then maybe it's a good time to do like Jesus and to ask the disciples, have a boat ready for me. And start here. This altar. This is the ultimate boat. Where we come, we enter 
through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to be in communion with Christ Jesus and in Christ to know ourselves as beloved children of the Father. Here we withstand the storms of daily life, the large number of people that threaten to press in, to crush, to touch, to take on your, no, just relax, enter the boat, surrender to the Father in Christ Jesus, let the Spirit guide you, let the Father nourish you as a mother breastfeeds a child with his own body and blood, and from here, continue to move forward in the direction where the Spirit leads you. Have a boat ready, Jesus said. Perhaps it's the words of Jesus addressed to you. Jesus saying to you, have a boat ready for me, that I may be with you in your day-to-day 